you have the perfect sales call with the perfect prospect, you have got exactly the solution to their problem, you know you're meant to work together, everything's going really well until you make the offer and then they say, I'm sorry, I just can't afford it. Hey there, I'm Nafisa Shireen, success coach for entrepreneurs, and welcome to Living Forward TV. For the best tips, mindset hacks, and strategies on how you can leap your income so you can create your ideal lifestyle, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell notification and you'll be on your way. How often do you hear from prospects, I'd love to work with you, but I just can't afford it. If you don't know how to answer that objection properly, then you are leaving potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table. By the end of the episode today, I'm gonna teach you how to set up your sales call so that you can overcome this objection before it even comes up so that you can increase your conversions and increase your sales and make more money. Even though it's the most common objection, it's actually one of the easiest to overcome because it's the least legitimate. It usually is another problem masking as a money problem. And when you know how to solve this, you increase your income right away. I want you to remember something really important. Everybody has the money or the ability to create the money for that which they really want. I mean, think about it. Has there ever been something that you really, really wanted? And then you find out the price and you get sticker shock and you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot afford this. And then you walk away and you think about it and you just keep thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And you have no idea how you did it, but you came up with the money for it. I know I have, whether it's a vacation, a house, a mentor that I wanted to work with, I've always been able to come up with the money for what I really wanted. And if you look at yourself honestly, generally that's what happens as well. So when people have an urgency for a desire to be fulfilled or a pain point to be solved, they will come up with the money. So if they say they don't have the money, something else has happened in that sales conversation where they either don't see the value or you haven't found the urgency yet. And we're gonna talk about both those things today. I know I say this all the time and I probably sound like a broken record, but when I talk about effective sales and authentic sales and sales with integrity, I always teach that it's always about the client. You always wanna find out what the client needs. And the way you do this is through questions. And it's these questions that help you help the client uncover their urgency. Because if there's no urgency to satisfy a desire or solve a problem, there will be no sale. So the two most important questions you can ask somebody when you're in a sales conversation with them to help you overcome or prevent the I can't afford it objection. The first one is you want to ask them, what's the impact of you not solving this problem? What's it costing you? This is not always a comfortable conversation. And you know, for those of us who are in the professional development sphere, we're used to asking uncomfortable questions. So I wouldn't say that it's easier for me to ask it. It's just I get better at it. But even if your business isn't in the personal development space, if you provide a marketing service or a website service or a photography service, there is still a cost to the client to not solving this problem. And you need to get comfortable asking them what's it costing you not having this problem solved because that is where you are gonna uncover the urgency and the value to them. And then once you've asked them what it's costing them, the next thing you wanna ask them is, so what happens if you don't solve this? What happens if this cost continues for you in your life or your business? So let's say, for example, your service is $2,000. That could sound like a lot of money to somebody who has a $200 problem. There's no value there. You might be really good at what you do and your service is probably amazing, but if to that person solving it only saves them $200, there's no value, even if it's really urgent. But if that same service and that same result to a different person in a different circumstance means that they're going to save $30,000 or they're going to make $30,000 or they're going to make $50,000 by solving this problem, that 2000 suddenly becomes a no-brainer because the cost of not having it is far greater than what the investment would be to solve that problem. And when you ask this question, if you get an answer that has really adverse consequences, like I might lose my house, I could lose my business, I could go bankrupt, I could lose my health, I could my spouse might leave me, I might get diabetes if you're a health coach, right? All these things that could really have impact on them and affect their lives, they're telling you right then and there what their level of urgency is. Now, if they say, well, it would have been nice, but no big deal, I'll go do something else, you don't actually have urgency there. And in those instances, I recommend you don't make an offer because nobody has money to solve a problem that they don't wanna solve. But when you get a real 
answer with real consequences and you have to be comfortable asking those questions, it gets harder for the person to say, I can't afford it when they, in their own words, have told you what it's going to cost them. Because here's the thing, people do like to be in integrity. And usually once they've told you what the cost of the problem is and how urgent it is for them to solve it, it is usually natural if they see the value, it, their problem will be solved to say yes and go forward. Now, when you get to the actual investment, even after the person has laid out the costs and laid out their urgency, they might still have a price objection. Like that still comes up because it's human nature. But at least when you ask these questions and you have found out what the cost is to them and the impact of that cost, then you can in full service and full integrity challenge them a little bit on it. Let's go back to this example of a $2,000 investment that could save this person $30,000. If they say, I can't afford that right now, you could then say to them, wait a minute, just a moment ago, you told me that if you don't solve this problem, it's going to cost you $30,000. And if you have to lose that $30,000, you're going to lose your business. Are you not willing to invest $2,000 to stop that from happening? And usually that's all it takes for the person to actually realize the importance of them saying yes to themselves. Now, some people might still say no, and that's okay. However, you've been in service to them and they actually can make a clear decision based on accurate information. But generally, when you set a sales call up this way where you are asking the person and you are asking them the impact and asking them about the cost of the problem, it rarely ever comes to an I can't afford it. Doesn't mean they won't be uncomfortable. Like sometimes when you state your price, they might just get really quiet or they might say something. And this is the other thing that's really important. When they actually say, oh my God, that's a lot more than I thought, or they say something, you need to be quiet because sometimes they're just processing. If somebody's facing a $30,000 loss, it can seem overwhelming to come up with another $2,000. So you have to let them process. And the best way you can do that is just be quiet until they're done processing. And I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs kind of make a mistake is they want to come in at that point. I have been on so many sales calls personally where people have said that and I just let them talk and by time they're done processing, they've pulled out their credit card without me saying one other word. So the importance of being quiet until they're done processing cannot be understated. And at that point, you can challenge them. And remember, at the end of the day, as I always teach, it's far better to get a clear yes or a clear no than an I'll think about it, I'm not sure, I need more time. Because that leaves them hanging and it leaves you hanging. So setting your calls up to overcome this objection before it even shows up and then gently and kindly challenging your client if the objection does come up will really help you enroll more client, close more sales, and more importantly, it's gonna help you not doubt the value of your programs. All right, now you might be thinking, okay, so now I know how to overcome the price objection. How do I even have sales conversations to begin with? Well, I got you covered. Below this video, there's a link to one of my favorite downloads. It's word for word scripts on how to transition any professional conversation into a sales conversation. Just go to the link below and grab it. And if you enjoyed the tips in today's video, please make sure to like, comment, and share it with your friends. And I would love to have you join the Living Forward TV Facebook community. That is an awesome environment full of vibrant entrepreneurs, and it's a place for you to network, grow your business, and get daily inspiration from me. Until then, I will see you on the next episode.